this is Chris Duncan, and here I'm going to critique some images for Dan. Um, looks like a recent food shoot that Dan, that you did, Dan, for a wedding venue, I believe. It's your statement of purpose and some stuff that they, uh, you know, different snacks and hors d'oeuvres that they can have for the client. So, um, before we go image by image, I just want to give you some overview here. Um, first of all, I think the, you know, you had for a single client, you had a nice consistent style. I like the surface that you go, you chose. It was clean, um, very kind of modern. It wasn't too old or you know too too contemporary. I thought it was a good balance. Your colors, the white plates are nice. Good light direction and light quality. I think that's really nice with your shadow density, showing good shape and form to everything. I like the shadow underneath the plate. So your choice of light modifier and your position of that um, and the size of that I think was, was done really well um, to give us lots of nice textures and shape and form uh, and roundness and, and you know, uh, doesn't look flat, it still has some, some dimension to it. So that's, that's really good. So now let's kind of go through image by image on some things um, that I think might can help you in the future with some more food shoots. So. Um, one thing I noticed on at least a few of these is I felt your depth of field was a little, a little too shallow. Um, and if this is a maybe a personal preference, but if I'm going to use a shallow depth of field, I want the, I want the focus point to be more towards the front. So like in on instance on this image, here, your uh, focus point is back here. And so I'm getting it really soft right through here. And I would prefer that this focus point be here and it goes softer back here. The butter's super crisp. I don't, the butter's not the star to me in this. It would be the, the biscuits or the muffins or whatever these are, these biscuits. That would be the star. And I feel like I feel like more interest is back here. And even the flower, the way it's arranged, is pointing me to the butter. And I don't feel like that's the star. So you know, maybe have the butter dish outside the plate, um, stack the biscuits up a little higher so we can have kind of a dome on them, and then move that focus point here. I think that would, I think that would help um, sell the product a little bit better too, and give it a little more pleasing uh, composition. So um, that's really what I thought on this one. You know, I didn't understand the flower. It just could be something to, to give it a little bit of color. To, you know. Um, I don't think that's an ingredient that's in there. It could be. I don't know that much about what's in these biscuits. Um, but I feel like that was, I didn't know where that fit in. And I wanted, you know, I like the edge of the biscuit that you're showing um, on some of these. Like I said, just what we talked about earlier, I really think would um, would help this is getting us piling up the biscuits a little bit more. Um, and even if you change your angle, you can hide the depth of the dish so it doesn't look too small in a big dish. Second image is this beautiful salad. Looks nice and yummy. Um, I like the angle of this um, as well. You know, your lighting, like we mentioned at the first, is really nice. The shadow you have underneath here is uh, really beautiful. Um, gives a nice shape. It gives us that contemporary shape of the bowl, you know, which leads us up. Um, into it. It holds this, this rim highlight you have on the bowl. Um, this highlight edge is done really, really clean and nice. So it, it contains me in the image really good. It keeps me in the salad. So I really appreciate that. Um, you know, a lot of these things, when it comes down to this, it's not the photography as much as it is the propping and the styling with food photography that things and, you know, kind of design is really a big part of it more than the the lighting or the comp or the lens choice or this you know here you have you have nice depth of field that falls off on the back edge of the plate all the focus is in the center of the salad at the high of its highest point so that's really nice to to see that um, one thing to look at when you're styling it and I don't know how much time you had on this or an art director or anything like that is trying to layer some of your ingredients a little bit. Um, I'm guessing this is some type of caprese salad. It looks like just tomato and mozzarella because um, there's a lot of tomato um, 
you know, that may be the intent. It's a lot of tomato. I see a salad and I think, you know, lettuce and cheese and tomato and red onion and croutons. And that may not be what this salad is. Um, since I'm seeing so much what appears to be mozzarella and tomato that it maybe is like a caprese salad. That being said, I would highlight maybe some of the back side of the tomatoes. I feel like I'm seeing the flesh part of them everywhere and the little seeds, um, which that one looks okay. But maybe turn the only, the only skin of this tomato I see here, and I think that's the pretty part of the tomato. Um, that gelatin, you know, we get weird colors through there. Um, I think you can show a little bit of that, maybe on these cherry tomatoes. Um, but try showing some of the back side of the tomatoes more um, and putting some glycerin oil on them so they have some nice water spots and they look fresh and ripe. Um, and we don't need to see as much of the flesh on it. That's just not the most attractive part of it. And just think of it, you know, as a person or a pet or anything else. You want to try to get the most attractive side of your subject. And as far as the lettuce um, composition, I like this lettuce because it kind of hides that flesh, gives us a nice shape with the tomato. Um, I feel like this one's coming up too high. One thing I look for in my food photography, and really a lot of my image making, is tangents. And so I've got the back edge of the plate here, and then I've got that lettuce and that tomato. They're all really close. There's enough separation on the tomato, but when you get to this corner, it kind of blends in to the, to the plate. So my eye kind of jumps out of the frame. Hope that makes sense to you there. So like I said, focus and lighting and stuff's nice on this. I think this is just a styling issue. What I'll do on something like this is I'll put a paper towel in the bottom of the bowl um, to stand up the salad a little bit more, especially with heavy vegetables like cheese and tomatoes and stuff. They start weighing down. So putting a paper towel or a napkin underneath it gives it some height. And then we can have a kind of a nice you know, full dome shape and we hide more of the back edge of the plate like we did on this side, but just avoiding those tangents or we come over it, um, which gives a nice presentation and pulls the salad more forward to the viewer instead of farther into the bowl. And so you don't need salad on the back side because it's pushed forward and it hides the back edge of that bowl. Let's move on to, let's see, I wanna do that other dish first. This is the, I guess, the protein tray. Um, again, nice light direction. Um, the consistency you have on these is done really well, Dan. I appreciate the, um, the softness of it, but yet showing texture and detail. Um, I think all your meats look good. I like the temperature of the brisket or the roast beef. You know, the turkey and the salmon has a nice color. Um, so you did a good job with that. Um, even the styling with the sauce is pretty good on this. Um, and the dill or the fennel that's on there, um, that looks really nice. Um, again, I think our focus point is a little shallow. Our depth of field is a little shallow. You know, it starts getting pretty soft right here on the on the salmon. And of course, this is really crisp. Um, and then we have the, the flower again, which um, I see the rosemary here coming with the, you know, in with the, with the uh, brisket or the roast beef and the turkey. And I kind of kind of feel like I know why you did this as a backstop to keep keep your eye in the plate. Um, but I feel since it's the same size and kind of the same look as your proteins, it's, it's a little competitive, you know, it's not drastic. Um, but I think maybe a different placement of that to keep, keep us in the food, to lead us into the food would help too. Although it's a beautiful arrangement and it looks nice with your lighting and your, and your fill cards that you used on this. I must say, I'm really appreciative of how you handled the highlights on these plates. Um, that nice consistent edge all the way around is done really well. It's hard to do and you did that really well. Again, some of this just comes down to some styling and design issues. Um, I'm not sure angling the plate as much helped you that cut down on your depth of field. So we could have probably pulled the plate a little bit more this way. Not much, maybe along this line or maybe this line and still had that angular composition and it wouldn't give us such a strong point to the bottom. Um, it would give us a little more readability, I think, that way. Just something to look at. Um, and we mentioned in that video, I know you joined us on the call, using some glycerin or some olive oil and brushing over the top of these proteins. Um, even if they don't put it on there, it just makes it look like it came out of the oven or the broiler and it has that nice 
freshly cooked sheen that a rich protein will have. Um, you don't want the plate to be messy with juices and stuff. I think you can have a little bit of that, but just rubbing the top with just a basting brush um, or a little paintbrush with some olive oil or glycerin just gives it a nice sheen. Again, another trick I like to do is I'll put pepper. I put fresh pepper. I grind some pepper on top of especially my roast beef or poultry. And not a lot, but it just gives a little bit more texture and kind of gives it a little freshness look like it's ready to be eaten that it hasn't been sitting there for a while. So I feel like your turkey and was looking a little dry on this. Um, and then, of course, the depth of field issue we mentioned. But overall, it's a, it's a nice presentation. It's clean, you know, and for a caterer, it kind of shows what someone can have in an event, um, the different options. And so that that thing was met really well with this. Um, one other thing is to watch the back of your table. Um, you know, depending on how big your surface are, sometimes your angle is really critical on not showing that back edge or just cropping that down. Um, you know, it almost looks like a shutter lag a little bit up there. Um, so just just look for that stuff. That's a quick cropping fix. Don't have to reshoot anything for that. Okay, and then we have these little appetizer deviled egg trays and stuff, and I think these are fun. Um, I like how they're consistent as well. Same direction, same angular. So I think this is a good angular direction that has a nice readability design um, on this that kind of makes us flow in like this and keeps us in there. So I think you did that really well. I'd like to see this less ang this angular composition on this plate that I think would have been beneficial. And, and these deviled egg looks great. Um, I think the styling on these is nice. Um, I notice not all of them have the little green leaf. I don't know if that's intentional, um, but if you're kind of, I like how they're kind of balanced, you know, it kind of creates a thing. Um, maybe if you're not going to do them on all of them, move one of the green ones to here. And so we kind of have a little triangle shape that we move through the eggs with. Um, and I like the egg where the devil, the filling is towards the front and not towards the back where we see less of the yolk. Um, you know, I would do, I would do those eggs if you want to turn them this way, put those in the back. So that gap like you have here is shortened and the client will still know it's a deviled egg, but we see more of what makes it unique and not the hard boiled white part that doesn't make it unique. This is what makes it unique. So highlight that a little bit more. Um, focus looks good on the cucumber and, and salmon. The arrangement's nice. Again, just watch tangents when you're doing stuff like this. Um, there's a little tangent here. We're seeing, you know, this is close. Um, and this one, maybe a little more gapping here. These seem tighter. And then we have big gaps here. So just some of the spacing to give it some room and some breathability and show that they're individual items, um, I think would help. And usually designing in odds. Um, I know you've probably heard this. So in threes, fives, sevens, nines, etc., tend to be a more pleasing composition. And you have sixes. So I think if we like would have ixnade that one and maybe ixnade this one or one of these, and arranged it in fives or added another one in there somewhere um, could have helped this composition too. So think about your odds when you're designing, not just with your food items, but if you're doing propping as far as like, okay, we have a dish and then a side and now we need a fork. That's our third or, or something in the background, a bread basket or, so we're kind of looking for not, not always. I'm not talking about if you put, you know, if you're going to put some leaves, you need three leaves or five leaves, but your main elements, think in those odds. And again, watch your table edge back here. Um, but overall, this I like this one. I think this is done well. I'm, I'm not sure the camera angle is best for this. I think, you know, you could have probably gotten closer with the macro and focused on one each of these and had the rest go a little more out. Um, unless showing the quantity was a big deal, um, saying that you will get six of each unless that's part of the menu. Um, but if it's just to kind of show, you know, an appetizer thing, I think this was a caterer of what you said to show just some of the options. Then I think you could have got by with a cup showing a couple of them really close and letting the other ones fall off with your depth of field. And really, this plate is kind of the same. Um, 
I would say the same thing. Um, still have that corner issue, which is an easy fix. Angular design is really nice on this. I'll appreciate that. Um, little contrast with the wood on this. I saw a little difference. You know, you see it a little bit here. And with this one is right here, right here, and right here. We kind of, it looks like it gets into the table. And I know that's, that's weird. Um, and it may not be a major thing. It's just, you know, it just takes away some depth to it. It makes it look a little more flat. Kind of looks like this wall goes up, like it's standing 90 degrees to the surface instead of continuing on in the background. Just an optical illusion that plays in our eyes um, where these tones were so similar and the light value is so similar on them. We know it's three-dimensional here, but it, we lose it back here. So that kind of tricks our eye, kind of like an Escher style effect, which can be pleasing or it could be something that you want to avoid. Um, you know, I just said do in evens or odds. I think that's a better night, but I like the sixes you have here with the apricots or mango or whatever this is, peaches, apricots, whatever they are. Um, I like the evenness in that, the symmetry in that. Um, the dollops look pretty good. You got this one going here. Um, again, some of your tangents are a little close. They're not, they're bad. It's not too bad. I like that we have some gaps that we can see in here. Um, you know, and that's what makes food photography so tricky is the styling and the placement of everything for compositional and design and that we really highlight the the food item more than the entire scene the entire scene um, i don't know if you've done print competition before but you think about the presentation will support the the main image shouldn't detract from it it should just flow with it i think some of you know all this that we're talking about is part of it we don't want some of the styling and stuff to take away from the item it needs to just add to it so little things where your dollop falls over here you know i think in photoshop you could probably just move one of these over and clean that up and that would look good um same here is on on this caviar which what up here that looks like some salmon eggs um to me that would be the star of this so just kind of make sure they're all facing the you know you have some consistency in that um, kind of with the devil dag it looks like that's maybe in a mushroom or something. I don't know um, But just some consistency there Like I said every time you look at one you see little things some of them are nitpicky some of them are major um, And some of it depends on the budget and the time constraints of the client and You know what you have available with the chef and you know if they bring you six of these and that's all they bring you And there's no more, you know, then you got to kind of work with that but usually what I have found, what a chef brings you and what you photograph are two different things. The chef has an artistic vision from almost from a different perspective. Um, because when they prepare a plate, you look at it, you're like, oh, this looks delicious, and you immediately eat it. And so that presentation is very short-lived. Um, you know, with photography of the food, the presentation lives longer. Um, so to get someone to to want to purchase this item or to salivate over it or to say, this is what I'm going to order. I think a little more care with some of the presentation, more than what a chef would do. Not that they don't have a great artistic vision when they're presenting their plate, but the way it's perceived in a different manner, even from the same person, someone that's going to eat it or someone that's going to order it at a later date because it, the picture doesn't get devoured. So it has a little longer lasting impact um, needs to be there for that. So overall, good work, Dan. Um, you know, I've seen a lot worse. Um, so I think some of the things we talked about, I hope this helps you, gives you some improvements on the next ones. You know, if you shoot some more from this company, send me a couple over. I'll be happy to look at those for you as well. Um, but like I said, as a whole, consistently, it's going to look good through a, through a catalog or a menu board. Um, just, you know, the, the brightness gives it a nice light feel, probably matches the feel of that that facility. So I think that's all really done well. Like I said, your lighting was really spectacular. I think the ratio on it, the softness, um, still getting the highlights good throughout the, the dishes, nice shadow depth, good tonal range. So all that's really done. A lot of it came down to, I think, just some styling and presentation and design. And that just comes with playing with it and, um, you know, working with it. So keep up the good work and Thanks so much for letting me take a look at your images and look forward to seeing you next time.